it is a good way to do it too. It's just like starting off with me brother, and my brothers and his brother, they all play, so we all get together and we play. So. Okay. And here Dave's doing like beginner clinics. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, the other brother Dave. He was the president for a while. Yeah, yeah. He was the president for a while, and then um, he just recently retired from that. He was like four or five years. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll put me in the sun for now. I always start off just dinking. Okay? So I want you guys on the line. So here's where I can just tell within five shots how you are. So we're just going to dink back and forth. You bring it to me, I bring it to you. There we go. Yep. No winners yet. I don't have my partner over there yet. <laughs> hey, it goes both ways. <laughs> right. Good. We want, want it to try to make it bounce in front of my feet. Just like that. There you go. So this is probably the most important part of the game is this dinking. It sets up all the shots. As you get better and better, it sets up the strategy. Because there's a lot of strategy in this game, but if you don't have the basics, it really doesn't matter, you know, the strategy. Yeah, that's why that's why I like this. Do you guys play golf at all? Ever played golf? Yeah, so this is the putting and chipping, you know. It takes a lot of practice to get good at it. But this is that's how the you score, right? Yep. So I use we use the dinking to set up the attacks. There you go. Oh, he did. Actually, him and his daughter got one too. Man, that's we pretty play, awesome. We play it some nights. Like, you know, you know how it is. We don't play much. They play all the time. There's pretty much nothing like. Geez, they go, they go easy on us. Yeah. They get behind. They get really serious. Yeah, and then like, right, because nobody wants to lose. Figure out how, how, how bad I really am. <laughs> What's bad is when you stop getting invited because you're not yeah. playing enough and they're too good for you. That's usually what happens. Yeah. But taking lessons in the beginning's smart. That's what when I used to teach, because I was a golf pro too, but. Yeah, and people can be, it's very clicky. Yeah. So if you're not, if you don't play a certain level, then. You know, they kind of roll their eyes at you. <laughs> Move it on, right? Right. Because if they have to wait 20, 30 minutes to play and then they get hooked up with the beginner, they don't they don't like it. But they but that's why they did split it up. So now you know you can come play with the beginners and you don't have to feel bad about it. Yeah. Not that you should feel bad anyway, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people want the competition. Yep. Okay, I'm going to move to this side. So we always want to be right on that line for the most part. It's okay to move back, but then I want you back on there. And we always want plenty of room over this net. Yeah. The thing is, if you hit it, I call it a neutral dink. So if you land your dink in this area, they can't really attack it. So that's why I like to lift it over and land it pretty shallow. Then it's not attackable, but I never hit the net that way. So my goal is not to ever miss. So if I, how do you beat a guy who never misses? You know, that's my thing. Yeah. Because I play senior pro, you know, I play regular pro, and I play the upper 5-0 level and 4-5 level. I've seen that on Facebook. Like, you're, you're busy playing. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody that plays more tournaments than I do. <laughs> I think we spent, me and the wife spent about 20000 last year just playing tournaments. So i got to teach a lot of lessons to get twenty grand back, though. Yeah. 
<laughs> she might come out, but she's a doctor of physical therapy and they have what's called survey, which is the government checking up on you this week. What do you guys do? You retired? You're still working? Uh, we built, I, we built homes. And we okay. Concrete. We you, concrete. Are you serious? Okay. This, I'm sorry. I think I contacted you guys one time because we were going to build a court in our yard. We have a big, like, half acre. Okay, yeah. But concrete got so expensive. Probably said too busy. Yeah, I think that's what happened, yeah. Yeah, it was, we were too small of a project, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's all you can do. Yeah, nobody wants to work anymore, huh? Well, you guys are super busy then. Well, that's fun. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to move back to mid-court. So we call this a reset. So it's just a bigger, so that's a dink, right? So this is just a bigger dink. That's why I like to learn it from, a lot of people teach from back to front, because everybody can just, they can start playing day one if you just hit the ball hard every time, and they just stay here, they never go up to the line. And a lot of people just play that way, and that's fine. But if people want to get better, like you said, I want to get better at the game, we got to learn from this small area back yes plus i i actually really like your guys's um method the lifting lifting up that's something i'm not gonna have to teach because you do it naturally that's why i can tell right away when i think with people if they can they're gonna be able to be good at it so i like how you guys are lifting from underneath that's key yeah so it's the same and i can tell you guys are not tennis players so tennis players i would teach a little differently but beginners that's why pickleball is so fun is you can learn without being a tennis player or an athlete at all. So this is just a big lift from back there. Yep. So just find your range. We still want to have it drop in the kitchen. Do you guys know this is the kitchen? Yep, this is the kitchen area because that shot is the one that's gonna get you up to that line. Our goal is to get ourselves up to this line because this is the highest percentage pickleball you're gonna get. Usually the people who get here first and can stay here are gonna beat the people that are back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. So our shots are all set up for you to try to get back to this line there. Does that make sense? So just we're gonna just find our range just like that. We're just gonna keep going. We're gonna find our range. I like that lift. So then we just want to be a little more athletic a little more wider stance right and then as we go the lower we can get the better in this game but some people just can't do it if they have medical issues but the lower we can get and lift this ball the better we're going to be okay okay <laughs> see that is like the best shot right you can move up exactly but we aren't going to do that yet so Eventually, we'll do what's called a three-shot drill. So just keep, we're just going to keep practicing. So this is just drilling, right? Yep. Did you guys play any sports at all? Uh, oh, back okay. In the day. okay. What was back in the day? Baseball. Baseball? Basketball. Okay. I think baseball is one of the best sports for this game. Just because you can, baseball can tell spin and how it's going to bounce and roll. I was a semi-pro baseball player. Yeah, semi-pro for the Topeka Owls. And, and that's why I say we want that two feet over that net. We don't even want to mess with the net. Yeah, eventually, you can bring it down. You're trying to cut it too close. So as we move back, the apex of our shot will move back. So once we get to that baseline there, the apex of our shot should go over this kitchen line. So that should be the highest part of our shot, and then it'll fall into that kitchen. So from mid-court, it's basically the apex of our shot is the middle of your kitchen, right? 
and then once we get to that kitchen line, the apex of our shot should be up over the net. So that's what we're trying to think of. If I could just put a string up here, that's what you're aiming for. You're trying to get it just right over that string and have it fall down. Okay. okay? So in this scenario, I would have a pole over there, a pole over there in concrete, right? It has concrete. And then a string across. So you want to get it up over that string. Don't worry about this. The, yeah, the net disappears. So let's think of that string up there. Okay. There you go. So now you'll figure out, you'll have to figure out how high that string is. People think that, but you'll be able to, I'd like to start it high and then work it low and then start it low, then work it high. You can see it better in your mind eventually. See, that is the perfect unattackable reset shot right there. Yep. Too high. Right. So that would be too high and that could get attacked. Could slam. Yeah. So now you're figuring out your string level, right? I can't really tell you how it is because everybody hits it a little different. That's perfect right there. Okay. So it's too high, right, Jody? And then eventually you would get to that on on a good attack, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, watch it hit the center of that paddle. Watch that ball hit your paddle. There you go. There you go, Brett. That's perfect. Okay. That's why I got a bag of balls. I got a bucket of balls. That's how I got good is I just kept hitting that bucket. I would hit a thousand balls a day. That bucket would hit, has about 250 in it. So once I get through four buckets, I know I'm done practicing that day. But that's how I became pro in three sports, you know, so. Because I'm crazy obsessive. It's how you get good. My, uh, my brother loves right at, yeah, right at his feet. Right at his feet. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we'll figure it out as we go. Let's keep going. That is pretty good. There we go. There we go. You're figuring it out. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, grab that one, Jody. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to mess with that net. So we got to hit the center of this paddle or close to it. There you go. Then it just becomes a more consistent shot. That's nice. That's perfect. There you go. And you guys know the rules, basically, right? Uh, I think pretty well. I'm not, I'm not okay. I think well. You say the serve first or sit last? Like, do you say serving first or do you say it? Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's, you say, you say your score, their score, and then whether you're the first or second yeah. server. Yep. Yeah. And it always starts off. Five, two, or one, yep. Five, I always start off zero zero two. Yes. You start off as the second server, right? Yeah. And then the other person would zero zero one and zero zero two, and we'll play some practice games after we get um, the three shots, the three main shots, which is the drop shot from the baseline, the reset from the mid court, and the dink. And then of course we have the the drives, right? Which is the hard tennis style shot. Yeah, the one that slams you. Which we want those too, because that's kind of the easiest shot to hit. It's just hitting the hard shot. Yep. 
And then the, just the hard slam shot can get you a long ways in this game. But a, a lot of people just don't like to play that style because it's just kind of boring, you know? There's no strategy. Okay, so we're gonna move back to the baseline, all the way back. So this will be our drop shot. A lot of times it's called the third shot drop because on the very, the third shot. So if you serve to me, I return back, right? It has to bounce. It has to bounce out of the yeah, two bounce rule. So you serve, it has to bounce. I return, it has to bounce. And then it's, then it's fair game, right? So we would call that the third shot. You would serve, that's shot one. I return that shot two. Your third shot, if you can, you want to get to that line in one shot. So if you hit a nice drop shot, you could make it all the way to that line before it ever gets hit. If you hit a drive, then you got to sit back and wait, right? So we're just going to practice our drop shot right now. So basically just anywhere, try to hit it over on this side in this kitchen. I'll move over there eventually. And just remember your string, that was perfect. That was perfect. Yep, and go back. Okay. <laughs> Not on the third shot. Yeah, so we're practicing a third shot right now. And then eventually we do what's called a four shot drill, which will get you into, the, into playing this game. That's very good, Brett. Yep. Oh, almost perfect. So this is just consistency, and the more you play and do what I call just doing reps, right? The better you're gonna get at it. Yeah, you're hitting right here, right? So let's focus on here. Sometimes I feel if I try to hit my hand, it'll actually hit the middle of the paddle. Or it'll just hit your hand, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There we go. Yep. Yep, perfect. Brett, you're a natural third shot dropper. Oh, sorry. Yep, let's grab some balls and we'll get a drink. So who did you play baseball for? The Topeka Owls. Well, I played for Glendale Community College in Arizona. Tabor College in Western Kansas and then Washburn University in Topeka, Kansas. And then I played semi-pro for the Topeka Owls. It was like a farm league of the Seattle Mariners, but that's as far as I went. And then I threw my arm out, so. Were you a pitcher? Yeah, I was a pitcher. And then after that, I switched to golf and became a pro within one year. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, an athlete. I don't golf ever. Really? Once I've reached my I've reached my maximum because I started so late in life. You know, the I knew a guy that he played that I played against every day. He played on tour every once in a while. And there's no way I could beat that guy. So I'm like, and he's not on full time tour. So I just stopped. Because I could only I was practicing ten hours a day. I can't really go more than that. So I got as good as I could get. And then that was it. I knew, good job. I knew I couldn't get any better. So then it just became beer golf. And then that wasn't healthy. So. <laughs> then you went into no, and then martial arts. And then I became a high level martial art guy. Developed my own self-defense system. Yeah. And then after that, my wife forced me into pickleball. 
because I wasn't going to play this stupid sport. For old people, right? It's not. A, no, that's what I thought. Because she was having so much fun, and she knows, okay, David would be super good at this. So she she signed me up for a tournament, and, and it was in 30 days. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make a fool of myself. So I played every day, practiced every day, watched every YouTube video I could find, read every book within those 30 days, and then we won gold medal in the very first tournament. <laughs> Yeah, and then I was like a just a friend of mine who was one of the highest levels here in town. That was good. Signed me, wanted me to play in nationals with him, which is the major, you know. So I'm like, and I had about five months until that tournament. So I was out here every day hitting balls with my machine and my green bucket and the scorpions and the road runners. And I won nationals twice in that same tournament, which people, you know, that's a rare event. So then I just kept going, and now I play pro and teach. I do this, and I I trade equities on the computer for a house account. Like your drop, though. We're, we're getting there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and grab a drink. Do you guys bring water? Okay. Oh, uh, you're used to it, yeah. Have you, how long have you guys lived in Havasu? Really? So you knew my dad then, probably, Chief John Alexander. Okay. Usually all the old school people know. They knew who my dad was. Yeah. Yeah, he was the chief of police here for 15 years. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do what's called the, the first four shots. So you're going to serve. So this is one, right? This is one. The return is two. It has to bounce, bounce. The third shot, you want to try to go to the kitchen or you hit the drive. And then the then I hit the fourth shot and then we're going to stop and do it over again. So serve-wise, it has to come from, the contact point has to be under your waist. And it can't be with the paddle upright. The top of your paddle has to be below your wrist and the contact point under your waist. Yeah, you're just a little high. There you go, perfect. So that's one, two. On my return, I try to get up to the line. So now you gotta fight your way up and that would be perfect. He's all proud of himself there. Okay, so you so you would score, you'd go over here. So now it'd be one zero two. So that's the first shot. The second, try to hit your drop shot. And that's my fourth, fifth, and just keep play it out, play it out, play it out. Nice. There we go. We're playing like pros now. <laughs> I missed. So you score, Brett. Here you go. You score. So it's. I'll let you say the score. I hit it out, so you scored. Two zero two, right? Yep. Do it again. Okay, so you would miss. So if you were the first starter of the game, which on these courts, this side's always first starter. So now it goes to me. Zero, two, one. Oh, good try. Always be ready. So when you get, when you get down to the bounces and you scoot up forward, yeah. 
Right, you don't want to go when I'm hitting, but you want to hit your shot, get as far as you can, and when this person, right before they're ready to hit, you need to be stopped. That's the best way to do it. So now it's one, two, one. Okay. So try to stay up there. Try not to go back too far because then this person has access to your feet. Yeah. Because yeah. if you hit a good enough shot, you want to stay on that line. And that's why you always want to think about bouncing it in front of my feet. No matter where I am on this court, if you bounce it in front of this person, you're pretty much safe almost all the time. So on this return, you should be getting to that line in one shot. Does that make sense? When you hit the return, so I'm going to serve. Yeah, you return. You should be able to get up to that line or close to it on your shot. That puts me on defense. Okay, so two, two, one. Oh. So if you're serving like that court, should I have been up front already? Yes, yes. And then you notice how you reached, it was a volley. And you hit it, that would have been a fault because you, yes, because it's called a non volley zone, right? So you cannot hit a volley out of the kitchen. So let me ask, okay, so yep. No matter, no matter what, I can't get into that. Hit no, I can stand in here, and as long as this ball bounces, I can hit it, but you could also get hit by the ball, and then that would be a fault. Yeah, people think they can never go in the kitchen. You can't. As long as it bounces in there, you can go in there. Yep. It's hitting it out of the air and then going in or hitting it out of the air while you're in it. That's called a volley. Right. Yeah, so if I'm serving from this side, Brett, you'd be all the way up. So it'd be three, two, one still. So go ahead all the way up to that line. Yep. Because you want to be a presence there too. And then anything you can actually cut off that I hit. Okay, three, two, one. Okay. Okay, I missed that. So I'm going to go three, two, two. So this would be the second server over here. Okay, three, two, two. And you can do a bounce serve. It's actually easier. You can't throw, you can't move this ball down at all. It actually has to just free, free fall. Okay, good. Get to that line, Brett. There you go. Nice. So try to bounce it in front of my, on in front, of, there you go, perfect. So that's a super safe shot, right? I can't do much with it. I mean, I could do an attack, but it's probably going out the back. Okay, so we're going, it's four, two, two. So Brett, you're up. All the way. That was a good idea. Yeah, because yeah, especially with your height. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. And it's, um, so especially with your height, you want to be able to reach in and get that ball because you can create some cool angles off of that. That's why you need to be on that line. And now eventually you have to learn a good block. Yeah, as long as you can have a block, yes. Okay, okay. And that's something. The overhead slam, you're kind of screwed no matter what. It's these shots here. Yeah. That, well, they can't, yeah, they yeah. yeah. Those are the ones you need to be able to block. The overheads, you're just in trouble no matter what. That's why we always want to try to bounce it in front of the feet. Okay, I think we're. Do you return? Okay, we'll do 4 2 2. <laughs> nice. There you go. So that's the one where you got to learn that block. Yep. Right. And that's going to be a whole other lesson. But when I do it, I my paddle's out in front. I actually go what's called backhand bias. So my paddle's always ready to block. It's always out in front of me, always facing that. So somebody can't. 
because I used to be susceptible to that. That was the only thing that could get me was those flicks at me. We call them flicks is when I'm out here, I wasn't fast enough to flick it because I'm playing, you know, the best players. So I just set up like this. So boom, nobody can get one by me now, you know, and it's, I'm quick enough to get back to do my defense. So I'm just here. So a lot of times we want to be up paddle ready. People say paddle up, but sometimes the pros are just down here. I'm just paddle ready. So it could be just out here or you could be here. You know, if you're fast enough, some people are just fast enough. Now I see you guys like the ping pong grip also. You're just naturally doing a ping pong grip. I love the ping pong grip. I do it because I twist my... The paddle twist with it. This is the continental. So if somebody comes in, that's why I said, okay, I see you guys aren't tennis players. I would never change a tennis player's grip because they have grew up with this continental grip and they just know what to do with it. Me, I like the ping pong grip. No, and it's your that's your natural grip and I wouldn't I personally wouldn't change it but you could if you wanted to to go continental and then we can always add a second hand later on because I always like the female to have a two-handed shot because the, the it, it'll get hit and it'll move right and with that two hand you won't either yeah but the guys I like the one-handed okay so I'm here Jody's returning. So we're doing five, two, two. Nice, perfect. So I do my drop. Nice. So try to bounce it in front of my feet. Yep, and that would be a great shot, that angle. Yeah. And just remember, I would have a partner there. You see the hole, you want it. You want to hit the hole, right. And that would be the best shot, actually. Yeah. And sometimes, a lot of times, my wife and I will do playing lessons, so we have two people here. But right now, we're just learning the basics. Okay, so we're, so we're six two two. So I hit it back to him because he's the one coming up. You're already there, so I don't want to mess with the. Yeah. Right, I don't want to mess with the person there. I'm going to hit at that person coming up. That's strategy. Okay, 722. Short. It's just, you, it, the bounce really helps people with. I'm not putting much on it, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I have that. I'm just, it doesn't really help you guys, right? And you know, in the, the more you can, somebody can develop that hard serve, the better. But actually, I get more airs off of a lob serve. Okay, try to bounce it, try to bounce it in front of my feet. Keep going. Nice. Yep. I'll get back on that line. So you're in the kitchen right there, right? Hit a volley. So that'd be against the rules. That's what we call you the chef because you're always in the kitchen. Eight two two. Yep. I hit. I aim for that hole right there. I got it. Eight two two. Maybe Brett's the entertainer. Uh, not yet, not yet, but that's coming. Right now it's just learning the basics of the game. So two eight, so when he's serving, you gotta be back with the server because of the bounce, right, the bounce rule. I naturally hit the people's backhands. That's just my strategy. Yeah, and most people aren't. But if somebody hits it to my backhand, I'm better at backhand than forehand. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we always, 
So my little mantra is, the ball's coming at you and it's coming hard, so be ready. So no matter what, when you hit that ball, that ball's coming at, you gotta think, that ball's coming at me and it's coming at me fast. So I gotta be ready. Okay, so Jody, serve. Watch out that, for that ball behind you. Go ahead and throw it in the bucket or move it away. Okay, so say the score. 2A2, right. So that would be illegal, right? Because it has to go past the kitchen. On the serve. Yep, the return can be in the kitchen. The third, anything else can be in but the serve. And the, the better, the deeper you get it, the better the serve. Yep. You can, or you can bounce it. Whatever's easiest for you. And that happens a lot because it's weird. For some reason, the bounce serve just works better. And that's something they just came out with this last year. Yeah, and it helps a lot of people. The bounce serve. Sometimes, yeah. I'm actually working on wicked bounce serves. There you go. So watch what my paddle's doing. Oh shoot, that was nice, you scored. All right, I, I gotta be harder. Yep. So you can't push it down. It just has to be pure gravity. You can't move at all, you can't throw it up. It has to be here and dropped. And it can, the bouncer can drop in the court or outside the court, it doesn't matter. So that you still moved it. They would call you on that, a ref would. Because you slightly moved your hand up. It's gotta be like dead there. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Oh. So see, so Brett, I saw you cheating up. So she's serving, I saw you moving up, so that's where somebody would go at you to try to catch you, yeah. Okay, so 8-3. Okay, a hard one. Okay. And that's something we'll work on at another lesson, but. Okay, so 9-3-1. I love this bounce serve. <laughs> I mean, my other serves this. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, that's nice, stay out of the kitchen, you did. Try to bounce it in front of my feet. So kind of a pause and you, you probably in your head it registered, okay, he's doing something. So if you were ready, yeah, you would have blocked it. You're kind of down here, ready for a dink. And then I go hard, and then that is hard to turn around. Okay, was that, okay, now it's 10. Do we just do 10? Even would be here. I think that was game on this side. Okay, we're gonna get a drink. 11, no, you guys had three. Yeah, 11 is the, um, the there's, so 11's typical. But in tournaments, you can go, there's sometimes a game to 15, sometimes a game to 21. 11, yeah. What's the other people? What do you have? Under 11. <laughs> so whoever gets to 11 first wins. It's not, we've been playing until 21. 21. Unless you're 11 0, and then it's. Normal game is 11. Game to 11. Yep. There you go. Sometimes in tournaments, if there's not enough players, or a certain round robin event, you'll play to 21 or you play to 15. If you're in the loser bracket, you'll play one game to 15 in tournaments. But typically, 11. 11 is the game. 11, yeah. Now, the only difference would be you have to win by two. So if somebody has, you both have 10, somebody scores 11, they got to get to 12. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how much time we got. 
Do you guys have a clock? I just have a timer. Awesome. Okay, so let's play again. So we're going to go me and Jody against you. Yep, you're on the other side. Yep. Yeah, that side serves. So it's basically the side closest to Bainbridge Island where it was developed. So anywhere court you go in the country, if you find north or where Bainbridge Island would be in Washington State, that's the side you start on. Yeah, right. Zero zero two, correct. So you tried to move as you were hitting. So in this game, I like to hit, and when they're about to hit, I stop. That's how you're going to get the best shot. So me and you are back. So zero zero one. You sure you want to be inside that? Yep. So I try to stay outside in the green, unless it's kind of windy in their, you know, in their face. And then I'll step up here. But otherwise, you just get trapped a lot. It's easier to move forward than backwards. Okay. So one zero one. Me me me. 